Good evening, sir. This is the agenda of the regular board meeting, President and Board of Trustees, Village of Burnham, Cook County, Illinois. Today is November 26, 2019. At this time, will the clerk call the roll, please? Trustee Taft? Here. Trustee Bonner? Trustee Garcia? Here. Trustee Greer? Here. Trustee Richardson? Here. Trustee Claybrook? Here. Thank you. Mr. Quorum is present, so we stand for the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God,
information about the water main break. Thank you. At this time, we will give a report from the clerk. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And Mayor, I want to thank you for manning the phones that day because that helped a great deal before we got in that night that yes. day. Well, a lot of calls came. I didn't have no time to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if there's anyone that knows of um, a family that's in need, we're um, doing Christmas baskets for this season for Christmas. So if you know of anyone or um, they'd like to call into the village hall and place their name um, and information, they can do so at the office. They can call the office 708-862-9150. Um, the baskets and um, the toys would be given out on December 12th, Thursday at the community center. Time. Um, is still to be determined. Also, um, Rem Bremen Town Manor Apartments in Tinley Park has affordable senior living. Um, they're distributing wait a waiting list application on Thursday, December 5th, 2019. It's for the ages of 62 or older, well, or um, persons with mobility <coughs> impairments and disabilities. Income limits are 31200 for one person, 35650 for two people. Um, they can call the number at 708-429-4088. Uh, between Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's for affordable senior living. We will post it on our website for further review. And I also want to wish everybody a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that report. And Diane, you will not be going to the Okay. Uh, uh, public Education, Health, Safety, and Welfare. Trustee Grill. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Discussion of, consideration of, and taking action to approve or not approve on the purchase of the following. Three sets of firefighting turnout gear, that's the coat and pants, 25 uh, fire helmets, 25 bib, bib style protective hoods, 25 pairs of firefighting gloves, and 10 pairs of rubber fire boots for a total cost of $17,599.12. And that's from Dingy's Fire Company. Okay, well, uh, before we proceed, Trustee, I would like for the uh, fire chief to come give us a little bit more information. Um, let us know what the payment plan will be. In the sure. Well, the, um, the equipment that's being replaced, first of all, the, the sets of firefighting gear being, that are being replaced is approximately 15 years old, and it's long beyond its useful life. Uh, we have a, uh, a need an immediate need for that gear to uh, enable firefighters who are currently qualified to do structural firefighting to have approved gear. <clears throat> There'll be additional needs in the near future, but the minimum sets we need at this point in time are three sets. And the the price of the sets uh, of the fire gear are twenty two hundred dollars, approximately twenty two hundred dollars mm -hmm. each uh, for a, uh, a coat, fire coat, and pants or bunker. The, the heavy it's called bunker gear, the heavy coat and pants, um, and uh, it's this is gear that we've checked out at the firehouse. This vendor is a vendor that we've been experienced with for several years, and the individual salespeople are people that we know very well and we trust them. Uh, they have served us well in the past. So that's the, the firefighting gear, the, the, the turnouts. As far as the helmets are concerned, the helmets that we have, pretty much all of them are 15 years old. Uh, we purchased them in bulk pursuant to a state of Illinois grant, uh, a small equipment grant back then. And they, fire helmets have an approximate lifespan of 10 years. We've been able to stretch it out another five years. Mo many of the helmets uh, uh, have um, some, fun that we have currently have functional issues that <coughs> make it necessary to replace them. And because a fire helmet, all this stuff is, is, is very much uh, safety equipment. And because fire helmets especially obviously protect the head, it's, ex it's extremely important that every firefighter have the latest uh, in firefighting helmet uh, equipment. So that's we're, we're pretty much purchasing a new helmet for each person on our roster at this point in time. 
Uh, the fire helmets go for $260 each, and so uh, the coats themselves are about 60, excuse me, the, the, the gear that I mentioned, the three sets was about 6,600. The helmets are about 6,500. Um, the, uh, the bib style protective hoods, these are hoods that firefighters wear over their heads uh, when they go into structures to do structural firefighting. They're, uh, they're extremely important for protecting the face, um, the ears, the shoulders, um, and that's why we're getting bib style because the, some of the, 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 uh, the hoods that we've had aren't bib style. They don't go down far enough that we've noticed. And so they really don't provide the, the protection that's necessary uh, uh, this day and age with the hot, the extremely hot fires that everybody is experiencing. So we're asking that, uh, again, uh, one, uh, one protective hood be purchased per firefighter on the roster. They're, they're <coughs> approximately $40 each, and that's about $1,000 for those. Um, as far as the, the, the firefighting gloves, we go for firefighting gloves quite often. Um, we've, we've been trying out different gloves over the years, and we, find, we found some gloves that we really like. Um, and uh, we figured that we might as well have everybody go a, a new set of gloves. Um, the, <clears throat> and the gloves go for $86 a pair, and so that's about $2,150 for the gloves. Again, we wear gloves on pretty much every call that, that, that we go out, um, whether uh, any fire call that we go out. And so it's an essential piece of equipment for protecting uh, firefighters' hands. Um, and the, the rubber fire boots, uh, we're, we're getting 10 pairs. We assessed what our immediate needs is for our fire boots. Of course, the boots are separate from the pants. They're the big, heavy uh, rubber boots that uh, we got. And we, um, those are priced at $135 each. Um, and those will be sized in, a, in accordance with the, firefight, the individual firefighter's needs. So everybody will, the, the 10 people that are going to be getting the new boots will have those uh, fit, custom fit. Everything that we're asking for, like I said, is, is essential safety equipment. It's called PPE, uh, personal protective equipment. It's, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it, it, it's the barrier between the firefighter and the bad stuff that, that we're surrounded by every time we go into a fire. So George, not familiar with it, because we worked at the steel mill. Also. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, exactly. Same, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Um, so, you know, we've been... Uh, Trying to, I've been looking around for grant opportunities um, to to fund this purchase, and the, the 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 grant that we've used before, the State of Illinois Small Equipment Grant, hasn't been available for quite some time, and I don't expect it to be available now. Um, we, we've been uh, utilizing some of the the federal grants for some bigger needs that we have, um, so I think that this that this is the appropriate time for the village to make this expenditure. Um, as, as, as far as a, a payment plan, I'm pretty sure that Dingus does do payment plans. They have done payment plans with us in the past. I have not asked them specifically, although before, in, in an email that, in, in, that I did get from a salesman, he did say that they do have payment arrangements that they can enter into with the village. Um, and so I certainly, you know, I'll leave that up okay, to... Okay, so board members have any questions? I do. What happens to your old equipment? Does it get reused by somebody or... Well, it kind of depends. Um, th there are there are some departments like in Mexico or not far south that we can send the gear to. Um, we haven't in in the past. Some of the stuff we some of the what we're replacing. I can tell we're not we're just going to probably throw away. Um, but uh, you know, some some departments do have places where they can send uh, some of this, and you know we'll. Investigate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Idea, right? Third world country. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. I would like to make a motion to approve on the purchase of the following: three sets of firefighting turnout gear. That's the coat and pants. Twenty-five fire helmet. Twenty-five bib site protective hood. Twenty-five pair of firefighting gloves, and ten pair of rubber fire boots for a total cost of $17,599.12. Okay, Trustee Greer has made a motion to approve this equipment by the fire department at a total of 
$99.12. Could we have a second, please? January 1st, there, the marijuana for recreational law will be passed. The new law will allow an Illinois adult age 25 or older to possess up to 30 grams of marijuana. Those, those using the uh, marijuana for medical purchases will be allowed to grow marijuana in their home. Census will start in March of 2020. You may do your census online, but if, if you do not <coughs> do your census online, someone will visit your home to, to have your census taken. And as you know, the census is very, very important. <coughs> and I would just like to just take a few minutes to uh, bring your attention to safety. There are so many incidents happening in our world today. Incidents while shopping at the mall, you got shootings, gang fights, incidents while driving your car, road rage, incidents while getting gas, people robbing you or try to hijack you. Even you have to be careful when you get out of your car to get gas, you, you need to pay attention or lock your doors because you're leaving out on one side and someone is coming in on the other side. You have incidents with people ramming into your car who are trying to hijack you. Incidents of children playing in the yard, parents not paying close attention, are just taking for granted that your child is in the yard and they're, they're going to be safe. You got incidents sending your children to the public bathroom, and I just heard of an incident today where this a school, they want a trip. So the teacher sent this little it was three or four year old child in the bathroom um, and someone raped her. We just can't take things for granted. Um, incidents with uh, private entrepreneurs, people meeting people online, then they're selling items and they're meeting you somewhere. Someone just got murdered for that. So incidents at our educational institutes, uh, elementary school and college also. So we cannot be we have to just be very, very careful. Don't take anything for granted. And don't think because it's happening elsewhere, it can't happen to us. It can. So we just have to learn how to pay more attention and to be safe. And uh, I just like to thank everyone for attending our meeting today. And I want you to know that Burnham is constantly moving forward. Thank you. That's true. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Griffin, for the reporting of information. Public Works and Building, Trustee Claybrook. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, discussion of, consideration of, and taking action to approve or not approve the lowest bid for the replacement of the furnace on the village hall side. SNS Services provided a quote of $3,400 for American Standard, 120,000 BTU, and 3300 for Ameristar, 120,000 BTU. Lord Enterprise HVAC for $2,275 for, $2, $2, for Bryant Carrier 110, 110,000 BTU. And let me add, uh, Trustee, that uh, well, the question has come to me that one of them was, uh, was 10,000 less than the other one, so I called the vendor up and he told me that uh, the capacity that we have here that only 80% is enough, because otherwise the extra heat goes up in the stack. So the most efficiency, 8%, would be enough for the <coughs> side of the building, because the other side of the building is mandated by another furnace. So. so I make a motion to approve the lowest bid for the replacement of the furnace on the village hall side. SNS services provide a quote of $3,400 for American Standard. No, you should just announce the low bid. Oh, okay. 
I make a motion to approve the Lord's bid for the replacement of the furnace on the Village Hall side, which is Lord Enterprises HVAC for $2,275, for Bryant Carrier, $110,000 BTU. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by Pussy Claybrook to approve the uh, uh, payment of a new furnace for the Village Hall, $2,275. We need a second, please. A second. And a second by Trustee Greer, the clerk take the roll. Trustee Cass? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? <coughs> yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee <coughs> Claybrook? Yes. Thank you, motion passed, proceed. Okay. <coughs> Discussion of consideration of taking action to approve or not approve the hiring of Jesus Lopez as a temporary public works employee due to the current situation in the public works department. Okay, so before we proceed, uh, we would like to Mr. Uh, uh, Perez to stand. I'm oh, sorry, Lopez, I'm sorry, Lopez, and, uh, and just um, uh, tell us, you know, why he feels he would be an asset to the village department. I would like to get the opportunity to work for the village and give myself a, a better job for in the future for me and my family and get something stable where I can give myself good work you know, for the community. Okay. All right. And uh, the position will start off at $17.50 an hour for now. And uh, you know what the situation is that we have here, but uh, we always looking for good people, and I'm sure it'll be enduring and long lasting. Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Do you have a commercial driver's license? Yes, I have a Class A. Class A on CDL, and then I also have a King driving on record, and also a King background. Okay. And all that's been verified. Yeah. Okay. Can I, um, and are you a board member today? Just curious. Okay. Um, I actually live over on 87th and Pulaski. I make a motion to approve the hiring of Jesus Lopez as a temporary public works employee due to the current situation in the public works department. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by Trustee Claybrook to approve the hiring of Mr. Jesus Lopez. You need a second, please. Second. The second by Trustee Garcia. Will the clerk take the roll? Trustee Cass? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Claver? Yes. Our motion passed. You belong to us now. Congratulations. <laughs> Just a reminder for the residents, uh, when you rake the leaves to the parkway, make sure they, you know, they're close to the parkway and not uh, like in the middle. I saw a few people making piles of leaves in the middle of the grass, and um, you won't be able to get to them if you do that. And also move your cars away from the curb so the uh, equipment can get to the uh, leaves and everything like that. And uh, that's all I have. Okay. As far as the leaves go, uh, the homeboy will not be picking up any more leaves this season. Today was the last day. Um, they might pick them up next week, but they put the notice out that today would be the last day. So, I mean, I was curious that they might pick them up next week. Right. Have they made a separate trip to the stop for those? Yeah, but they didn't get them with the gardeners. No, they didn't get them with the gardeners. Yeah. And where do the notices go so the residents know they would post it on the website? We had on the website. We didn't pass them out there in the village hall. So, and now we got the month up here, and we'll be putting out more information, you know, for the residents. Flyers that were the stickers okay. you put on the back, it's kind mm -hmm. of um, yeah. So, what days? What days do people come? Well, they were out today. Uh, Dwayne, is there uh, special days that you go out with the leaf collector? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any day, you know, weather permit. Weather permit. You know, oh, okay. As long as we don't have any snow or. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Okay. okay. Uh, then you will be reporting tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> and Wayne, would you bring him to the office sometime tomorrow so Luke can process the information? Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, um, an ordinary revolution in the planet. <coughs> Trustee Garcia. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Uh, discussion of consideration of existing action to approve or not approve ordinance number 2019-0007, prohibition of recreational cannabis business establishments and, and ordinance amending chapter 62, offenses and miscellaneous provisions, article 5, offenses against public health, peace and safety of the court of ordinances, village of Burnham. Okay, so let's go through this again. Again, this is the uh, cannabis uh, and the ordinance. And what this actually means is that um, <coughs> the village of Burnham, I'm um, asking the board if they would, uh, if we would opt out of it for now. And we'll take a wait and see attitude and see what happens down, I mean, down the road. Uh, as many other towns are doing, um, we have uh, been doing the survey. I think we had a meeting about a month or so ago. We concluded that the survey was like 50, 50 plus, 50 percent against it. Um, right now it's probably 51, 49. Uh, so, um, so we, um, I'm going to ask the board to uh, vote to opt out of it for now. And we'll take a wait and see attitude and see what happens. Does the board have any questions? Discussion of consideration of the taking action to approve ordinance number 2019-0-007, prohibition of recreational cannabis business establishments, in ordinance amending chapter 62, offenses and miscellaneous provisions, article 5, offenses against public health, peace and safety of the court code of ordinances, village of Burma. All right, thank you. That is the um, very briefly, uh, this is an ordinance that just will have it prohibits business establishments and dispensaries at this time. It does not prohibit personal possession and use of cannabis after July, not July, January 1st. Uh, if you're a minor, you're still uh, illegal to possess or smoke marijuana in the state of Illinois. However, after January 1st, after midnight, uh, you will be able to, as a person, enjoy it and, 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 and possess it and smoke it. Uh, there'll be no prohibition against that. It's akin to the Visit this in the future. A lot of communities are doing this. One of my uh, associates in the Illinois Municipal League, uh, we had a conference in October, and there was a lot of discussion. Most towns that have medical marijuana dispensaries are definitely going into it. Uh, we don't have such a dispensary. And uh, uh, the only thing I can tell you is that uh, there are certain strings attached to federal grants that this town has applied for and at this time uh, has been given the federal grant uh, for the grade separation study at Burnham and Brainerd Avenue. Under federal grants, we have to certify that we're compliant with all federal law. It is still a federal law and against the law to possess marijuana. So we have a juggling act here on a bridge where we want to have what I would call another video store in town. So it's a balancing act. I've advised the mayor that we should take it as other communities are looking at things, but we have an extra added uh, obligation here to see that at least our constituents <coughs> in this town will no longer be annoyed by that intersection of Burnham and Brainerd. And naturally, uh, Murphy's Law the only person who expressed any interest in an 
dispensary is at the corner of Burnham and Brain. Yes. We, you know, there's luck with him. So uh, it's a simple proposition, a no-brainer in my mind. Do you want a bridge or an underpass? They call it a grade separation, or do you want to be able to go buy marijuana right there? Okay. So. And the last thing I'd like to say before we uh, take the vote, before the board votes, um, if the village does not opt out of it by December 31st of this year, in our case it would be December 12th, but that would be our last meeting. And if, uh, if Mr. Johnson wanted to go and put up a, a store somewhere, then we will not be able to stop it if we don't opt out of it. So that's all I have to say. So proceed, Trustee Mr. Well, you made motion, but you need a second? I'll second it. Let's take about Trustee Kappa for the picture roll. Trustee Cass? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. yes. Thank you. Motion passed. Proceed, Trustee Garcia. Thank you. Discussion or consideration of the taking action to approve or not approve the Comcast Television Franchise Agreement Ordinance Number 2019-0-008 and Ordinance Approving and Authorizing the Execution of a Cable Television Franchise Agreement by and between the Village of Burnham and Comcast. Okay, are there any questions from the board over there? Okay, proceed. Um, discussion or consideration of the taking action to approve the Comcast Television Franchise Agreement, Ordinance Number 2019-0-008, in Ordinance Approving and Authorizing the Execution of a Cable Television Franchise Agreement by and between the Village of Burnham and Comcast. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by the trustee <coughs> to approve this agreement with Comcast. We need a second, please. Second. Second by Trustee Richardson. We'll call the roll. Trustee Cass? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. All right, motion passed. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Trustee? There's a third one. Yes. Discussion of consideration of and taking action to approve or not approve the listing agreement for the property located at 14512 Torrance Avenue in Burnham with Coldwell Banker agent Chuck Roby. Okay, now this is the old furniture store that's on Torrance. Um, we had an uh, entrepreneur that had entered into a, uh, a contract with the village of Burnham about six to eight months ago, or something like that, and they made a, a decent down payment uh, down on the project. and. For whatever reason, they changed their mind, and uh, without a astute attorney as he is, then I mean he uh, designed it in such a way that if they uh, fell through on the agreement, that the money would not be refundable. And so, if you would like to touch on that briefly, then we can tonight that we're requesting, and we'll get this off tomorrow. We probably will list it uh, for seven to five a thousand. Probably accept either six to five or six thousand for it to make sure we move it. And this is also a class A qualification, and we would like to get it back on the tax roll and get a business that is operational. Okay. As the mayor said, about uh, uh, several months ago, uh, a businessman wanted to develop the, the uh, he and his partners wanted to develop the old furniture store into a restaurant. And uh, cash deal and he put up a total of sixteen thousand five hundred dollars and uh, we extended the payment time to close the deal but we made it contingent that uh, if he didn't close the deal by a certain date the money would be forfeited to the village non-refundable and uh, that he forfeited we signed off the agreement to release the 16500 I will be drafting a resolution that that money be transferred into the general fund rather than holding it in escrow, and uh, then the village will be able to use that money to pay or invest in whatever uh, the Board of Trustees feel is uh, appropriate at the time. So uh, we still have the property, and we still have an additional This is a marketing agreement. Actually, it's a listing agreement. So it's a broker or commercial broker to sell. Yeah, we'll have to pay 
any of them spend on the proceeds. Okay, so proceed, Mr. Messina. Discussion of consideration of a taking action to approve the listing agreement for the property located <coughs> at 14512 Torrance Avenue, Burnham, Illinois, with Coldwell Banker agent Chuck Groby. I'll second it. So it's an idea of the The motion was approved by Trustee Garcia and the second by Trustee Schaff to approve sale and the listing of the property at 145 12 Torrance Avenue. Trustee Schaff? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. And the motion passed. Thank you. Eight six eight 
7012530. Again, if you have any questions, call Andrea at 708-868-2530, extension 128. This event is held every year, and it's a wonderful, wonderful event. So come out, bring your family. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Greer. At this time, uh, I would ask Trustee Griff to stand. I would ask Clerk Chavez to stand. And at this time, I would ask Chief Horbud if he would come up to the podium. Um, well, the village of Burnham certainly do appreciate everything that you've done for the Tell him his wife was coming, so uh, you know I am kind of sneaky. So, uh, um, well, we would like to present this plaque to you on behalf of the village of Burnham, the trustees, the board, and, and the mayor, myself. And we certainly, I mean, appreciate everything that you've done in the department through the years, and it all reflected here in the 28 years that you've been here. And we certainly do appreciate you, sir. Very much. Thank Thank you very much. And also, since you're going to be retired, you know, you'll have some extra time on your hands. So um, it might be for work or it might be for play. So we would also like to present this uh, tablet to you on the behalf of the Village oh of without the support of your, your Honor, the Mayor and members of the Board of Trustees, of course, the citizens as well. I did note that um, 13 years ago on the second meeting of November is when I was appointed wow. the Chief. Wow. So the Trustee Lou said, it, it, it said that this was my birthday last Sunday. I think maybe she meant it was my anniversary <laughs> of being on the department. But, uh, you know, thank you very much. A special place in my heart, as always, for the folks at Burnham. Um, I know where everybody lives, so <laughs> I won't be a stranger. But be safe, be well. Happy Thanksgiving. And after, uh, and after the meeting is over, then we have some refreshment here, and we like to entertain and, and, uh, and celebrate his retirement. Okay, uh, I'm under the um, <clears throat> Nyanbana Communications, the Memorial Responsive, but I'd like to ask for a moment of silence of uh, August Weaver and a Corey Moore, you know, who was killed in an accident yeah, about a week ago down on Torrance, a 20 year old young man who lives here on Marquette, and, uh, and, and August uh, had his funeral service today. So if we could have a moment of silence. All right, thank you. And on the unfinished business, I would like to uh, make a correction. I said the next meeting would be December the 12th. It will, in fact, be December the 10th, December the 12th, 2019. Is there anything on the new business? I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion on the by Trustee Claybrook. Do we have a second? Second by Trustee. Trustee Rich. Trustee Cass. Yeah. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. All right, motion passed, meeting adjourned, and uh, stick around for the party. <laughs> <laughs>